American History, Utah, 1908. American History. Mr. H. L. Stoddard, in an interesting article published in a recent number of the Arkansas Gazette, adduces several proofs in favor of the propositions that this country had an intercommunication with Asia, not less than a thousand years before Christ. The Book of Mormon, as is well known, tells of the immigration of Lehi and his household from Jerusalem, and this event, this event is supposed to have taken place about the year 600 before our era, accepting the common calculation of biblical chronology. The Book of Mormon also tells of an earlier intercommunication between the two hemispheres, and according to the teachings of the inspired founders of the church, man first appeared on this continent. Again, now, I'm not shy about this. My wife is Mormon. I am not. My wife is. AM1, thanks for the $2. Appreciate you. Every penny counts. It means a lot. I hope you love the material more than anything, but your donations, they really do. They really do help out. You know, I wake up early um, to get these things out for you guys, you know, before anybody else wakes up because uh, during the day, it's pretty much impossible. Again, going backwards to what I said, the, the Mormon history is incredibly interesting. And when you look back at, quote, Mormon history, I've talked about this endlessly. Um, it, it it goes far beyond what we know of, of as the Mormon church today. Um, a more man, a more Mormon, Moorish man. I've shown already when I did my Utah episode, the obvious blatant Arabic correlations between uh, Provo, Utah, first being called the, um, the pilgrimage. They called it Mecca. And Arabs from all over the Southwest, Arabs, Got on camels, I'm not kidding, proven. Got on camels and rode to Mecca, Provo, Utah. Um, the historical overlays with the um, Quran and Arab and some of the early Mormon teachings, they've been um, altered a bit, and the, the Catholic overlays there are, are unfortunate. They've had their hands in every religion. The Catholics have manipulated, you know, some of these later ascribed, um, you know, the Talmud and Sharia. And some of these other things, but the earliest versions of these texts, the Quran especially, are incredibly powerful. The Book of Mormon has a lot of amazing historical events. When you look through a lot of the stuff and you look at it, just be open-minded. Don't have a prejudice because you have to discern all these things for yourself. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm just showing the things I find, and it's up to all of you to come to your own conclusions. But don't let this um, affect you. When you look at their history, there are plenty of really good, great. Um, non-Mormon um, hist historians that have shown that there's a lot of, again, you read the article I just read and you look at some of the stories that they tell of America, whew, they overlay pretty spot on. It's pretty amazing. So again, man first appeared on this continent. Interesting. Here, man, as some scientists now maintain, is indigenous. Here, here, the Garden of Eden was planted. Here, Cain murdered Abel. Here, the city of Enoch was built. Here, Noah preached and built his wonderful ship. Now, you've all, not all, but many of you are familiar with a lot of my talks with um, Dr. Longo. And I've been saying this forever. He's been saying this. That's kind of what brought us together. We've been building a pretty beautiful uh, representation of what the true Fertile Crescent was, what the Arabs and the Turks and the Greeks, what they looked like. And that the not only rewriting the history of the, of the quote, uh, Arabic culture um, from an Atlantean perspective, but also, again, Scythian, <laughs> Hindu, uh, and how we're going to get into the the Buddhist, the Guatama, Guatamahama Buddha, right? Maya, his mother, Maya. And uh, did Buddha's origins exist here? Well, some of the oldest representations of Buddha are found here in the Mississippi Valley. And some of the oldest carved representations of the swastika also found here in America. Very interesting correlations. Science will ultimately, we believe, find the proofs of this great truth revealed to the prophet Joseph and through him to the world. Here in one of the remarkable finds which points to Asiatic intercommunication. Now I've shown Asiatic, quote, Asiatic intercommunication through almost all these episodes. Alaska, Oregon, um, California. Where else did we have it? We had it in Arizona. Um, and it exists in all these states. But those are the ones I've already presented in my previous episodes if you want to go back and touch on them more. Three or four years ago, a gentleman, while looking up data in the Smithsonian Institution, found the likeness of a Buddha portrayed upon a shell and thoroughly published an account of the matter. 
This shell had been found many years before in Toco Mound in Tennessee by Cyrus Thomas and had been suggested, as all other evidence is, that it is in conflict with the theory advocated by the complacent, the complacent coterie. So he's saying that, oh, he, he was, he, it was sequestered. Again, let me read that again. This shell had been found many years before in Toco Bound in Tennessee by Cyrus Thompson and had been sequestered as all other evidence is that is in conflict with the theory advocated by the complacent coterie or the, you know, the kind of, uh, um, the people writing the narrative, right? Another likeness of Buddha was found in a mound in Georgia. Also, Buddha statues in the Yucatan represents in the represented. I'm sorry, it's blurry. The represent this representation of the Tia Kia Ta Kuk have been found in Cusco and also by Clarence B. Moore of the Academy of Natural Science of Philadelphia with exploring the Black Warrior River Mound region in Alabama. Cuts of which are shown in his late volume, Certain Aboriginal Remains of the Black Warrior River. We showed a little bit of that in the Alabama video when we showed some of the um, interesting symbol symbolism found on the, the pottery. Referring to the specimen shown in his book, an eminent authority states that it seems to be a representation of the well-known Korean symbol represented upon their flag, the yin-yang, another name for Tia Kia. He said this, however, subsequent to an article published in the American Antiquarian and failed to give the author of these articles credit. Oh, yeah, but still, again, that happens all the time, right? But the most important thing I highlighted here in yellow, that, oh, this has all been sequestered because it doesn't fit the theory advocated by the people in charge. And those article illustrations are given to, to show that the yin yang or tia kia swastika sun symbol, serpent symbols, as well as the Greek fret have been found in the mound regions in the Mississippi Valley, Yucatan, and Peru. This, the correlations there, you guys. Swastika, yin-yang, and the Greek fret. These cultures are created from this original people. Peoples, right? It's all from one. Think of the Babel idea, and it's, you can kind of wrap it up into one big thing. Now that that you look at, you can go as far as to take this into the, the theosophy's idea of the root races. There's some things I don't like in that, but there's some really good stuff. And you know, we were all one people before some major cataclysm. Essentially, we all still are one people. Don't ever think anything otherwise. We are all one people. We're all here, experience a, um, you know, uh, we're all in, encased in a physical body, having a divine experience, so to say. But essentially what I mean by that is phenotype, skin color, blah, blah, blah. All these things really don't mean much. But from a historical standpoint, you correlate the language and the symbols and you keep coming back to a common source. It may be remarked that Buddha, in the opinion of some scholars, is none but Noah. Boom. I've been saying that one for a long time. Um, that correlates really nicely with Janus. This connects us with the uh, India superior, uh, Vishnu, all of these things, you know, Janus existed, uh, there as well. And Enoch, right. The city of Enoch, Noah, the, the correlations are endless, but I just love that Buddha was Noah.